guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a different video. This is a topic that I've briefly talked about on my channel and I really kind of just wanted to dive into it a little bit more. With Fashion Week starting on September 8th in New York, I really wanted to kind of like dive in and discuss how relevant Fashion Week is when it comes to trends. So I just, I've been doing a lot of research lately, so I will be linking a lot of references down below and just things that I've looked at in the past couple of weeks. Also for context, I don't have like a fashion history degree or anything like that. So this is just me loving fashion and doing a little bit of research. That's why I have so many references down in the description box, as well as some papers to you that I will be glancing down and kind of referencing a little bit because I feel like it is going to be a bit of a longer video. So I, it will be including timestamps. So there's like different sections in the video if you, in case you want to skip something. Thing, they're also going to be in the description box. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and get into it. So what exactly is Fashion Week? So for all of you that don't know, Fashion Week is a week where the designers and the brands and houses just have a chance to show their newest collections and that pretty much sets the trends for the upcoming season. Um, so there are multiple fashion weeks going on worldwide, but there are four most important ones. So of course, Paris being like the top tier most important one. And that has all like the really established designers. So that's like Chanel and Dior. Um, then the next most important one would be Milan, which has a, a very like maximalist kind of vibe to it. So think like Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci used to be part of it, which I'm gonna come back to later on in the video. Um, and then there's London Fashion Week, which is the one that I know the least about. I feel like it's a lot of like, newer designers and newer brands and like I feel like it's a younger vibe um, and then there's New York Fashion Week which has a very like street style kind of vibe I feel like overall it has a very like street style kind of thing going on usually fashion month kicks off in New York and then goes to London then goes to Milan and then goes to Paris to kind of like finish everything off um, and who are the people that are attending fashion week so mostly there's like editors the press which I would tie in like celebrities and influencers into that because they're the ones that bring in publicity for the show um, then there's buyers and those are the people that are actually going to be buying things from the collection to put into stores um, so those are kind of like the people that bring in the money um, and then there's also like the friends and family of the designer and like some VIP customers so these are people that have spent a lot of money throughout the years and are very loyal to the brand so these people I don't want to say they're like they don't really bring anything to fashion week but they just kind of like it's more of like a courtesy as like a loyalty thing that they're kind of invited there are two major fashion months so there's one in september which shows like the spring summer stuff and there's one in february which shows the fall and winter stuff some more established brands will show other collections throughout the year so there's going to be like a pre-fall collection or like a resort collection and this is mostly to cater to everyone that lives in like the southern hemisphere as well as just to show other newer collections for some reason i always thought that the resort collections were for people that are going on vacation in the winter months. That way they have a little bit of inspiration and new pieces to wear when they go on vacation. And I don't know why, I always just thought that that's what the resort collection was for. But anyway, that's just kind of like a random side note. And then of course, there is also the haute couture shows which are only shown in Paris. And those are more like extravagant, like walking art kind of runway shows. Um, but for the time being, I'm just gonna focus on the most important ones which are like the fall, winter and like the spring, summer collections. Going back to the timeline, the reason that these brands show these collections six months in advance to the actual season is because they need those six months to actually prepare the clothes so that they're in stores for the appropriate season. And that's something that I want you guys to keep in mind throughout the rest of this video is that there are six months from when you see the collection to when you can actually buy it. So kind of keep that in your head as we go through this video. Before we continue on to the future of Fashion Week, I kind of want to go into the past and talk about a little bit about the history of Fashion Week. So if you're not truly interested in a little bit of a history lesson, you can kind of skip ahead to the next section. However, I will be very, very brief because I actually want to do a whole separate video on the history of Fashion Week. So I will be very, very quick. So Fashion Week started in Paris in the mid 1800s and the first runway collection was said to be by Charles Frederick Worth, along with Jeanne Paquin and Jean Pateau. Early shows were said to be for core customers, editors, and buyers. The public didn't actually see the collection until it hit stores six months later, and magazines actually weren't able to show the collections until they were actually ready to be purchased in store, which I think is really, really interesting and something to also keep in mind while I go through this video. In 1943, New York started hosting these like press weeks, so that would be like the press going in and looking at all the collections in like one particular week. And New York Fashion Week, as we know it today, began in 1993 when the executive director of the 
CFDA organized everything. That way the editors and the press wouldn't have to like run around the entire city trying to get to all the press events. The United States stuck to a more traditional runway shows while the European counterparts started to do more like extravagant shows. In the 70s and 80s, Mugler started having these giant shows where the models would even like outshine the clothes and it would just kind of be like a spectacle. In the 1990s, Alexander McQueen was creating these incredible runway shows and even inviting celebrities to walk along the runway. So brands like Chanel, Fendi, Rick Owens, as well as many others created the fashion shows and kind of transformed them into more of an experience by creating these more like avant-garde concepts and performances and even bringing it onto our screens. In 2015, Fendi actually live streamed their show using drones and now pretty much every single runway show that we watch can be live streamed online and that allows the brands to kind of market directly to the customer. So up until about 10 to 15 years ago, magazines like Vogue were seen as fashion bibles. And I remember this episode of Sex and the City where Carrie says that she used to buy Vogue instead of dinner, which honestly, me. And I just think it's like so funny because like that's something that nowadays the younger generation didn't really grow up with magazines. I used to buy Vogue like every single month growing up and it kind of makes me sad that the younger generation is not really doing that or the magazines are not as important to them as it was for me. Of course that all changed with the rise of fashion bloggers and Instagram's launch in 2010 and it was kind of like game changing for the fashion industry as well as fashion week. It's actually said that three quarters of our purchases are influenced by social media and I don't mean like social media as in like you bought something through Instagram. I mean more so like you were influenced to buy it because of Instagram or TikTok or like whatever social media. So for example, um, how many times have you bought something because you saw your favorite person on Instagram wearing it? It doesn't have to be the exact same item, but maybe something similar just because it reminded you of that photo. An indirect way would be like, you're already thinking about buying a certain piece of clothing. So then you go on social media to check how to kind of put it together or style it. And that's gonna help you make a decision if you're actually going to purchase that item or not and it makes me wonder how many times have you consulted a runway show to see how you're going to be able to style something probably not many and i feel like that's also due to the fact that social media is a little bit more relatable in the way that people style things as opposed to runway shows that are a little bit more like over the top because it's more of an artistic expression brands can also use social media as a way to track how many people are watching their live shows as well as how many people are interacting with their content on like a daily basis and what things people are liking and what they're not liking based on the interactions that they're getting on their own own pages. So this has also opened up conversations to new voices like fashion commentators here on YouTube. So channels like Hot La Mode, The Fashion Archive, Bliss Foster, Mina Lee, just to kind of name a few. Fashion commentators is what I feel like fashion bloggers should be doing during fashion week. Like, yes, I want to see your outfit and like what you wore to fashion week. That's amazing. But I also want to see your comments on particular collections. And I feel like you rarely see that from fashion influencers. Like in my mind, fashion commentators are like the really artistic films. And and fashion bloggers are like the mainstream movies. So there's nothing wrong with either of them. It, they're very, very different. Like mainstream movies are obviously made for the masses. They're liked by pretty much everybody in the population and make more money. And then the artistic films have a little bit more like symbolism and depth and they do tend to win way more awards by like the Academy. So like do with that information what you will. I'm just gonna let you sit on that. Um, but that's kind of like my take on the difference between fashion commentators and fashion bloggers. And I'm not trying to offend anybody because I myself am a fashion blogger, so. Actually, I read this article a while back and I could not for the life of me find where this article was. I'll try to keep looking for it, but it was a really old article, but I feel like this one line from it is really, really relevant. They said that fashion bloggers went from being editors and publishers to being marketers and salespeople, which I actually think is a huge change from when fashion bloggers started to where they are now. And I feel like it's also a reason why so many people have such a dislike for influencers because they went from being fashion magazines in their own right to being like used car salesmen. And like, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but like, it's true. Like, I feel like they're just kind of like shoving things down your throat that they want to sell to you. So I feel like that is one of the reasons why so many people have such hatred for influencers. Okay, hatred might be too strong of a word, but you know what I mean. Fashion bloggers and influencers have helped with the rise of street style. And I feel like street style helps set so many trends as well as create a big hype around the shows. It almost has become like as big as the shows themselves. I feel like a lot of people, when they think of fashion week, they think of like the street style aspect of it because obviously the shows on the outside are 
flock with photographers trying to get photos of everybody and people wear like their best outfits for fashion week i feel like a lot of times when i'm shopping i'm like oh my god this would be so cute to wear to fashion week like as if i'm ever invited to like uh, one of the big fashion weeks but i just think it's such a big part of fashion week and i feel like the brands are very aware of this and that's why they lend clothes out to like the really big fashion bloggers or influencers that way the influencer will tag them in an instagram post or a youtube video or something sometimes non-fashion influencers do get invited to fashion week and i'm not going to name any names in particular however if somebody popped into your head i'm just gonna say if the shoe fits then I do understand why brands do this. It is pretty smart as much as I don't particularly like it. I do understand from a marketing standpoint, you are getting like a pretty large loyal audience to look at the brand that somebody that they admire is interested in. So obviously it's gonna create some future customers and it just totally makes sense from a business standpoint. And this whole like fashion bloggers, influencers effect on the fashion industry always makes me think of the youth quake of the 1960s because fashion before used to be for like adults and then in the 1960s that all shifted to being like the youth and teenagers and like they were the ones that are dictating fashion and the parallels are just kind of there for me i would love to do a whole video on that so if you are interested let me know in the comments below but for the time being i'm just gonna like slide it off to the side while i was doing research for this video i kept asking myself like would influencers care about fashion week if they were not allowed to post about it like do they care about the particular collections that they're going to see or are they more interested in like the exclusivity of it like yes we can all watch the shows at home so it is kind of inclusive but you know it's not the same as getting invited i feel like you're getting invited is like you're in like the in crowd you know what i mean like like do they actually care about the collections or is it more so like they just want to get invited and like be seen at fashion week do you know what I mean? Something that I was kind of thinking about, I don't really know the answer to that. It was just something that was in my head while I was making this video. However, fashion bloggers and influencers have created so much content for inspiration. Like you have thousands and thousands of images going through your phone on a daily basis. Like with um, Instagram and TikTok and YouTube, you just have so much inspiration going through your eyes on a daily basis. And it's bound to be influential. Like for example, um, Y2K style is booming on TikTok right now. And it's something that stemmed only from TikTok and social media because you don't really see it on the runway shows. It's at least not at the level that you see it on social media. And I just think it's really, really interesting. However, this also makes me question, do we actually like these trends or are we just overexposed to it by our favorite people that we end up liking it? And then like my next train of thought is, do people actually like certain trends or are they just they know that they're popular if they post about it they'll get like more traction online thus to more followers more money more fame and then invitations to fashion week truly i actually have no idea i don't have the answer to that i'm just kind of like thinking out loud so i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below because i genuinely don't know <laughs> Back to the actual topic of this video, what is the problem with Fashion Week? And I feel like social media has made trends come and go at an alarming rate. Something will become popular overnight and then two weeks later it'll be deemed as basic because it's overexposed and it's everywhere on social media and then after that it's just kind of like out. So if you're wearing it then you're kind of like out, you have no idea what's going on in fashion. And an example of this would be like the little white tennis skirt with the blue sweater and the white collar. Everybody was wearing that like a few months ago and now it's just kind of like basic outfit and i feel like it also makes it really hard for brands to anticipate trends because sometimes something will be trendy for two seasons so like two fall seasons for example and then other things will kind of be done overnight and like a couple of weeks later and it's gone and it's done and i feel like it's really hard for brands to kind of keep up with that um however fast fashion brands are able to keep up with the trends online because they're able to produce items so fast just because they have really poor working conditions as well as like no quality control at all. Nina Lee actually made an incredible video talking about TikTok and like the fast fashion industry. I'm sure most of you guys have seen it. If not, I'm gonna be linking it down in the description box. Definitely recommend, it's an amazing video, very, very insightful. So I'm gonna be linking it down below if you haven't seen it. With that in mind, I feel like runway trends are a little bit too slow for the current rate at which trends kind of come and go. Do you guys remember what I said earlier in the video about brands showing things six months prior to when they're actually in stores? I feel like that's probably the biggest issue with fashion week. 
then what is the future of trends and where they come from? And I think social media, if used strategically, can be a really great resource for kind of tracking trends. So um, you can look at like really big players or like trendsetters just to kind of see what things are going to be trending next. You can kind of create little paths. So for example, Emma Chamberlain, she thrifted this colorful Argyle sweater vest. And then obviously the fast fashion stores kind of picked up on that and they created their own like version of it. Like literally they just copied it. Um, and then Argyle sweater vest became really popular and then sweater vests in general became really, really popular. And I'm not saying that she's the reason that sweater vests became popular, but you can kind of see where my path is kind of coming from. Really big influencer with a lot of influence. And then uh, obviously the fast fashion brands are kind of picking up on that and just kind of following that trail. Okay, this is obviously not gonna happen, but in my world, I would love to have like fashion month content and actually hear from the people that are involved in creating fashion week. So I wanna hear like interviews from the designers explaining their like reasons for creating things like what they're referencing why they use certain fabrics or color palettes i want to hear from the models that are on the runway from the makeup artists and i don't know like i want to get my fashion month content from somebody that's actually involved in creating these pieces or like creating like the magic of fashion week than just from influencers that might not actually understand the show and like i'm not trying to like downplay fashion bloggers or influencers like at all i think it's amazing and i still think it's important for them to attend however they're only sitting there for like 10 to 15 minutes and they might be attending like four or five shows in one particular day so they might not fully grasp the entire concept or references that they're doing throughout the show so i would love to hear more from like the designers and then to explain what their vision is and like what their kind of their thought process is for the show so i just think that would be a little bit more interesting and would kind of bring back a little bit more of like the magic of the fashion industry i don't know that's just kind of like my thought and what i would love to see happen but i really don't really see that happening in terms of fashion week some brands are actually choosing to have smaller audiences and a core audience that understands like their branding and like their branding like DNA, if you will, that way they're a little bit more understanding of what the concepts are and like what they're trying to reference. If I was gonna predict something, I feel like brands are actually gonna pull out of the fashion calendar and show their runway shows at whatever time they wanna show them at. And Gucci actually announced just that last year. They're actually not showing at Fashion Week in September. They're gonna be showing two shows as opposed to five throughout the year. And the reasoning for this is because they feel like fashion shows are very wasteful in terms of like sustainability and like the fashion industry has to do a little bit more in terms of sustainability. However, I find it really interesting coming from Gucci just because let's be honest, Gucci was kind of like king on social media for a while and it's still making waves with their collaborations with Harry Styles and Jared Leto and those campaigns. And at the end of the day, Fashion Week is a marketing campaign. So it's pretty much to get publicity for your brand. And I feel like those campaigns with Harry Styles and Jared Leto and pushing gender norms and that whole conversation that they've been having which is amazing but i feel like those campaigns in particular are probably bringing them in way more money than the runway shows are like if they probably put it on a balance i feel like the things that they're doing online are probably bringing them in more money i don't know i'm just kind of like thinking out loud i actually have no idea what those figures look like i have no idea how beneficial it is the runway show as opposed to like having campaigns online obviously if it was beneficial for them business wise they would be showing like money is definitely their main priority so i really don't think that they're taking a huge pay cut so i feel like them focusing more on like online stuff i feel like they're probably making the same amount of money ish I don't know. And some brands are actually opting out for having some of the pieces that they show on the runway available in stores after or during fashion week, which I think is really, really smart. I personally wouldn't want fashion week to cater to the rapid speed that trends are coming and going on social media. However, I don't really see that changing anytime soon unless like we all kind of agree to like not change our minds on trends so fast. So I feel like more brands are gonna end up doing that or the whole fashion calendar is gonna actually end up changing and then they're gonna have to kind of go with the seasons as they actually come up. I feel like if they wanna grasp the next generation, they're gonna have to move a little bit faster than the six months that they're currently moving at in the fashion calendar, but I don't know, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I don't have the answer for that. I, like I said, I would rather them slow down a little bit, but business wise, I feel like they probably won't do that. I feel like they're more likely to kind of move a little bit faster. And anyway, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you guys liked it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this topic. I personally love fashion week. I love the magic of it. I've grew up looking at all the photos of the runways online and reading Vogue every single month. So I have like a really big soft spot for fashion week. I personally love it. So I really hope it doesn't like cease to exist. I really hope they kind of like 
change their business model a little bit, even though I wish it would stay the same because I feel like the rapid pace that trends are coming and going on social media is very, very problematic. For the time being, I think I have done enough talking for today. I probably talked your ear off and my throat is currently dying. So I'm gonna go drink some water. Also, please don't come for me. I, like I said at the beginning of this video, I am not like a fashion expert. I just love fashion. These are just kind of like my opinions on it. I will be putting all the references down in the description box so you guys can are interested in doing a little bit more light reading. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well as don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to turn on your post notifications so that you don't miss out on any new videos. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Thank you.